So we're going to start off chapter 4 here, and uh, chapter 4 in the Foundations of Math 10 is Roots and Powers. That's what it's called, Roots and Powers. And yes, we've talked about square roots and cube roots and powers of 2 and 3 and 4 and different things like that. We're going to dig a little bit deeper now, chapter 4, into, uh, into Roots and Powers. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is... Um, what is a radical? Okay, this is a term you're going to have to get used to using. A radical is <clears throat> it's basically uh, a it's it's a number that's expressed with a root sign. Okay, so you can call it a power if you want, but it is a value. Say okay? so. Let's say it's a number. that is expressed with a square root sign. And so an example would be something like this, uh, square root of 16. That's a radical. If you express it like this, and you just show this, that's a radical. All right? That whole thing is called radical. The number inside, right here, this number is called the radicand. Mm -hmm. Radical and radicand. That's right. Uh, sometimes you won't see this, <coughs> sorry, you won't see a number with a square root sign, okay, and um, I'm going to have to change my uh, definition here in a bit, but you might have something other than a square root, we're going to talk about just square roots to begin with, but you might have a number that's, that's in here, and this refers to the index of the radical, okay, so I'm going to put square root sign in brackets here for you because that's the only thing you've ever seen before. So that's why I wrote that. And the, the examples that we're going to start off with are all going to be square roots. So for example, um, square root 5. Now, we just call that, we can nickname that root 5. You'll hear me say that. You don't, you don't have to uh, include the square root 5. If you just say root 5, that means square root. Okay, root 5. Now, if we compare root 5 and root 16, all right, root 16, the square root of 16, that has an exact value. Okay, and what is the square root of 16? 4. No, not 3. It's 4. Okay. The square root of 16 is 4. Now, 16 is a perfect square number. Right? 4 is the square root of 16. We've already learned this. So when you see this radical, sometimes it has an exact value. If it's a, you know, a decimal uh, 0, if it's just an even, an integer sort of thing, that's exact value. Square root of 5, <clears throat> in order to get the value for square root of 5, you're going to have to go on your calculator. And you turn that on, and you say, hey, Where's my square root button? In this calculator, it's right here. <coughs> you may have a square root function on your calculator that's somewhere else. You need to find it. You need to know how to use it. And you get square root 5. Now, in your calculator, you may have to punch in 5 first and then the square root function. It's up to you to figure out how your calculator works. It equals. You should get a number that looks like this. Now, notice this is not an integer, right? So that means that this is not an exact value if we write the decimal. So if I say 2.23, this value right here is approximate. It's not exact. Why? Because I have rounded it. I've truncated it. I've shortened it. Now this here, the reason why radicals are important and why we need to use them <clears throat> is because this is the only way of expressing this value as an exact number. So root 5 is the expression of the exact value. 
there. 2.23 is just rounded, it's just approximate. We can have a radical that is a um, fraction. You can have a radical that is expressed as a fraction. Okay? You can have square root of 4 over 9. Now, it's important to note that square root of 4 over 9 can also be written as, and this is a property of radicals with fractions, square root of 4 divided by the square root of 9. That's very, very important. You can sort of distribute that radical sign to the numerator and the denominator. And why is that important? Well, it's important because we can actually simplify this, right? We can write a number value for this. And that's 2. And this number value for square root of 9 is 3. And so 2 thirds, that's about 0.667. If we round it off, that's the approximate value. Of course, 2 over 3 would be the exact value. If you get on your calculator and you go square root of 4 divided by 9, and you ask your calculator to give you a decimal, look at that. Okay? What's that? Okay. <laughs> Last thing we want to talk about here is this value right here. Okay? Root 16 is a rational number. Root 5 is irrational because it cannot be written as a ratio of integers. Okay? So when you have a, an integer here, that's a rational answer. This is irrational. Okay, it's important. If it's a decimal place that doesn't repeat, it doesn't end, then it's irrational. And so there's examples on page 207 of irrational and rational. Now, before you go, I'm going to give you a short assignment again. You have your exam tomorrow, chapter 3. So this is your assignment for chapter 4. But that's your mini lesson. And again, you can check this out again. It's a mini lesson on radicals, rational, irrational, exact approximate values.